Medina is a breast imaging and uh, breast interventional radiologist at the National Cancer Breast Screening Program in United Arab uh, Emirates, and she is the head of the radiology department in Sharp. So we will see you online, Menna. This is my topic for today, breast cancer in young women. This is the points of the lecture I will discuss. Our target age group is women aged between 15 to 39 years old, including breast cancer discovered during pregnancy and lactation. As from age 25 to 29, 20% of women uh, had a delivery within one year, either they are lactating or not. Breast cancer is the most common cancer type among young women, as in older women. It accounts for 30% of cancers, and it accounts for 5.6% of all invasive breast cancers in this age group. The median age at breast cancer diagnosis... This is my topic for today, breast cancer in young women. This is the points of the lecture I will discuss. in the Arab world is between 48 to 52, comparing to the international age, which is 63. Most of the cases in this age group are initially diagnosed at later stage, stage 3 and stage 4, reaching 44% of the patients compared to older women, um, which account for 17% of the patients. Johnson et al. in 2018 uh, compared the incidence of breast cancer to older women older than 40 years old. We can see that uh, in our age group, most of the cases invasive inside to breast cancer and invasive breast cancer are much, much higher than women older than 40. Also in this diagram, we can see distant and regional uh, breast cancer is more in our age group compared to the other group and also um, in the women older than 40, localized and inside to are much higher than in our age group. This is a diagram comparing stage 2, 3, and 4 diagnosis at our age group comparing to women uh, older than 40, and it's much higher. So the risk factors, uh, women, young women, they have the same risk factors as older women, yet with few differences. Up to 25% they have positive family history, 50% they have germline mutation. Of course, we are all familiar with BRCA1 and BRCA2, but there is other uh, in the list, other germline mutations, most importantly and most recent is TP53. Also, breast cancer is more frequent uh, with young women with low or normal BMI compared to high BMI in women above 40, maybe due to malnutrition. So in this box, we strongly consider bilateral mastectomy if the women, they have this germline mutation. For the pathology, we found out that most of the young women, they have ERPR negative, HER2 enriched subtype, also grade three histology with vascular and or lymphatic invasion, much more than the other subtypes. However, even when matched by histological subtype and hormone receptor, similar as older women, still our age group is worse. This is Balma et al. in 2022, uh, putting this diagram describing the breast cancer subtypes. Our group is uh, in this box, which is HER2 enriched and triple negative. Um, it has high KI67, high proliferation, high grade and worse prognosis comparing to the other women.
In our age groups, a clinical presentation, um, it's explained in Lang Langman uh, et al. in 2021. This is a 110 patient study, but still uh, it goes with the UEE and the international standards. So 91 or 92% presented with palpable mass because they don't have a screening program. The mean size of, uh, of all lesions on imaging was 3.5 centimeter. Malignant calcification were present in almost 50% of the cases. 41% um, of the cases are multifocal or multicentric or both. Uh, cancers with high grade representing 67.3%. And at presentation, 3.6 patients had bilateral malignancy, 7.3% had distant metastatic disease. For the imaging, it's very challenging as we don't have a screening program for our age group. So diagnosis is very challenging also because of the presence of dense breasts and because of other factors. So with modalities as initial investigation, usually breast ultrasound is the first line because the patient will uh, discover a palpable lump and she will come to the clinic for breast ultrasound. Of course, other modalities uh, is available like ABUS, for example, uh, mammography, but still mammography is a second line of investigation comparing to the older women, also MRI. For the future modalities, we have contrast enhanced uh, breast ultrasound, which is still on trial. This is a study by Jea et al. in 2020, comparing ABUS versus handheld breast ultrasound. Uh, almost 1,000 patients with dense breast uh, went for this study. And we found out that, uh, or they found out that ABUS and handheld ultrasound can be an adjutant to mammography, significantly improve breast cancer detection in dense breast. And um, ABUS was even higher in, uh, in as le being less operator dependent and reproductivity higher than the handheld uh, breast ultrasound. And ABUS showed a great potential for use in cancer early detection um, in this study. Another study compared the ABUS versus handheld um, performance. Almost 2,000 patients in this study and uh, they found out that ABUS can be successfully used in the visualization and characterization of breast lesions. Even it has a higher performance in detection of architecture distortion and can be a supplement to mammography. This is an example for ABUS discovering a very small breast cancer in a 30 year old uh, woman with a very dense breast, extremely dense breast. This is a type of cancer we need to detect in this age group. Of course, dynamic MRI breasts have a, a supplemental, uh, I mean, very important role as a supplemental MRI for screening women. This is what they did in uh, Baker et al. 2019. Uh, 40, more than 40,000 uh, patients entitled for this study. I know this is not our age group, but still it, it implies in terms of being extremely uh, dense breast. So the use of supplemental MRI screening in women with extremely dense breast tissue resulted in diagnosis of significantly fewer interval cancers uh, during a two-year screening period. So this is my cases. Uh, they are all from my practice. I choose some interesting cases with some pitfalls and teaching points. So my first case, she's a 34 years old, positive family history, youngest diagnosed at age 45. She has no other risk factors, para two, breastfeeding, and uh, she was referred from the ob for left breast uh, palpable lump. This is my initial investigation, ultrasound. So I found out an area with uh, altered echo pattern, micro calcifications, uh, which is seen as, of course, echogenic calcifications by ultrasound, but no mass is nothing. It was hypervascular by Doppler. So I wrote it's um, suspicious altered echo pattern um, corresponding to the clinical felt lump, and I categorize it as by rats 4A. On second thoughts, it should be by rats 4C, but again, because my mindset was she's young and, um, and all this stuff, which we need to change, of course. 
uh, initial investigation was mammogram, and I found this calcification, extensive calcifications uh, in the upper outer and upper inner quadrant. No masses, though. Uh, I did a biopsy. It was extensive ductal carcinoma in situ, grade 3, um, with cancerization of lobules and no invas invasive ductal carcinoma in the sample. Uh, we did MRI later for, for staging and to see the extent of the disease, and it was uh, covering the upper inner and upper outer part. So for staging, we did, uh, of course, uh, PET-CT and all. Uh, it was T3N0, M0. Uh, this patient, she goes for left uh, skin sparing mastectomy with reconstruction. She didn't do anything for the contralateral breast because she was to get pregnant and breastfeed in the future. My second case, uh, she's 31 years old, negative family history, no risk factor, para four, breastfeed, all of them. Um, she was coming for a regular follow-up because she had multiple fibroadenomata, uh, and she'd been doing uh, the follow-up with me for 18 months. Um, she presented to me after one month from her regular six months follow-up with pain, stretched skin, bulging, hard lump, uh, which is increased in size. Initial investigation was breast ultrasound. I found out this uh, mass, huge solid mass lesion. Um, it was hypervascular by Doppler and hard by elastography, which wasn't the case when, when she did the ultrasound one month back. So I, I reported it um, as it's, it's now getting bigger, almost twofold, and uh, it's hypervascular and heterogeneous by Doppler and all this. So I did a true cut biopsy. It was a fibroadenoma. But the surgeon, we, we decided that we, we go for a surgical excision. The results was surprising for both of us. Fibroadenoma with lobular carcinoma in situ. No invasive features. Of course, this we did a discussion with the MDT. Um, I did dynamic MRI, breast MRI later, and staging was T1A. Uh, N0, M0, and we decided she would go for close follow-up. Third case, she's a 30 years old, negative family history, no risk factor, Nalipara. She was following up a fibroadenoma for eight years annually, and she came for her general checkup because she had multiple uterine fibroids also. Uh, I did for her ultrasound. Well, this particular case, it was lobular, I felt with some effacement, so I did a biopsy. It was infiltrating ductal carcinoma grade two to three. Later, uh, she did TOMO and dynamic MRI breast staging was T1 because it was below two centimeter, N0, M0. She went for lumpectomy. Also, uh, from the MDT, we um, we advise to do bilateral uh, skin sparing mastectomy with recon, and we will see later why. Uh, my four case, this is 35 years old with positive family history, mother diagnosed at age 50, no other risk factor, para one. She was referred from the surgeon because there was, there was a huge rapid growing mass in one year. I did for her ultrasound, I found out this huge mass always taking all, involving the whole uh, left breast, almost eight centimeter. It was hypervascular. Um, it wasn't hard by elastography, yet it has some hard parts, but it wasn't that hard, even on, on examination. So I, I thought it is, it, uh, it's uh, more likely to be fluid tumor. Since it's rapid growing, it wasn't that vascular, it wasn't that hard, and I could categorize it as by rat 3 I did a biopsy. It was very surprising, invasive mucinous carcinoma. Um, no hormonal, I mean, no ductal carcinoma in cytos. You couldn't uh, define any. Uh, no uh, ly lymphovascular invasion and no microcalcifications. Um, we didn't follow with the staging or immunohistopathology because she went back to her home country. Uh, although we recommend for her to do left uh, mastectomy because the, the surgeon thought no, we cannot save the, the skin, plus or minus hormonal uh, treatment. 
uh, but we, we didn't follow up with her. My fifth case, she's a 31 years old, lactating for six months, para two, no family history, no risk factor. Uh, she was presented with right breast hard lump since late pregnancy. So she was lactating. Uh, this is a classic story. Um, she, she found the lump during late pregnancy and they told her it may be milk, maybe this, maybe that. She didn't come, um, the, the gyna didn't refer her. So she went to another ob uh, and she sent her to the oncologist, thank God, and he requested sonomammography. That's why it was a late diagnosis. So this is the ultrasound done outside our facility. It was reported as benign lesion, calcified fibroadenoma uh, by RAT3 or 4. They didn't specify. I did sonomammography. Uh, in the mammography, we can see the lump and we can see the axilla. Also, there is a lymph node with microcalcification. This is classic by RATS5. Here is the lump. It's vascular. It's hypo, um, hypoechoic, hypervascular. Here is the lymph node. So I categorize it as by RATS5, and this was my initial uh, diagnosis. So we did a biopsy, we did an MRI at the same session, staging was T4, N1, M0, and she's now on new adjuvant chemotherapy. This is a sixth case, uh, a 30 years old, uh, negative family history, uh, with a positive risk factor because she's one, uh, she was on long-term uh, oral contraceptive pills for other gyna problem. Uh, but they didn't follow up her. She was just taking the oral contraceptive, presented with right breast six o'clock palpable lump accidentally discovered, uh, refer referred to me from the surgeon for sonomammography. Uh, I did ultrasound. It was a lobular mass, hypoechoic, a bit vascular, a bit hard by um, elastography. I took a biopsy. And this is my um, report. So for me, this was a, a warning sign, the hypervascularity by Doppler and, and hard parts by elastography. I ca categorize it as by rats 4 a So the biopsy, it was infiltrating ductal carcinoma grade two to three. Tumor cells are negative, ER negative, PR negative, and HER2 negative. Uh, KI67 staining was 80%, which is very, very high. Uh, I did an MRI also. Uh, it, it proved to be ductal extension to the nipple. So the staging was T3, N0, M0, and she is now uh, on new adjuvant chemotherapy and will be followed by right uh, mastectomy. This is my last case. Uh, she's a 37 years old, left breast uh, um, they discovered the six o'clock accidentally discovered lump and she has a positive family history, no other risk factors and self-referred for breast ultrasound. This is a mass by uh, ultrasound, solid mass lesion. Again, it's hypervascular by Doppler and a bit with hard parts by elastography. I took a biopsy. So this is a teaching point to um, concentrate on the warranting signs, never neglect that. So I categorize it as by rats 4C. Diagnosis was infiltrating ductal carcinoma, grade 3 uh, over 3. She did TOMO and MRI staging was T1, N0, M0. Uh, she went for lumpectomy and regional treatment. Uh, she didn't go for... Uh, prophylactic uh, skin sparing mastectomy or anything. She just choose a uh, lumpectomy. Now for the treatment for our age group, we know that it's, it's high proliferation, high grade, worse prognosis, and the treatment usually falls with chemotherapy. So treatment compared to uh, women plus 40 women, uh, treatment is similar to older women, yet with special consideration. Uh, thank you, Dr. Amenna. We wished we can uh, see you. <laughs> and now with the star of artificial intelligence in um, mammography, uh, Dr. Sahar Mansour. 
She is uh, really a very special.